Hello, Pod Fam, and welcome to another holiday tea party. Hello, yeah. Rachel. Hello. How are you? Here for the holiday vibes. I am so here for the holiday vibes. I finally finished all of my Christmas shopping and like the world stopped being insane for me personally for a little bit. So I'm feeling yeah. quite, quite good. And we're actually recording in the same house today, not together, but same, same house. Yes. Rachel is in her office. I am in the living room. Um, mm -hmm. I'm with her two wild children. So if you hear a lot of like banging and running and meowing, it's just Rachel's children. <laughs> Yeah, my, my sweet little kittens. Yeah, we weren't sure which room those two little guys were going to be in because like one of the little ones was being very weird with you. <laughs> so you're like, is he going to be in the office? But eventually he decided that you were all right. So yes, it stuck, took them 10 minutes to decide where they wanted to be. But um, yes, so far it was very good. chaotic. Yes, yes. So it should be okay. I mean, they are your godchildren. So exactly. Yes. But are you here for the holiday vibes? Are you finished your Christmas shopping or what? Oh, I am totally here for holiday vibes. I did a good shop yesterday. And um, I have like, I guess like four gifts to do, but they're very much the same thing in a way. Mm. So I just need to like go to the place to do it, if that makes sense. I get you. You know, it's like yeah. like I've got to go to a cidery because they, they like, you know, just different ciders. And I was just like, okay, mm -hmm. cool. I'll just go get a bunch of different ciders and mm -hmm. probably some like desserts and stuff because they just want like consumable things. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them being my brother who is flying in from BC. So That'll be so nice. Yeah, like he's flying with a carry-on. Like I don't want to be like, here you go. Here's a bunch of stuff for you to fly back with. Like, no, that's mm -hmm. not that's not fair. Um mm -hmm. So that's why I'm going to be like, here you go. Here are your like favorite snacks, you know? Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So that's my plan. Lovely. And then I have to do um, a, a couple of Secret Santa gifts as well for mm. the family Christmases. But those are fun. I'll, I'll just kind of gradually do those. Sweet. Well, shall we get into our teas? We're actually having the same one because as we noted, we're in the same house. And Exactly. It's a You're going to have to say what it is because I don't remember. I remember Rose something. It's a rose hip hibiscus. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's actually quite good. The first time I had it, I let it steep for a bit too long in the hibiscus, and it was very prominent, where this yes. time I'm getting more of the rose, so. Yeah, no, it's got the nice rose with just a little bit of hibiscus, but I can definitely tell, like, a hibiscus could definitely take over, you know? Yeah. It's just, like, too floral. Oh, my. <laughs> Sorry, no, the <laughs> amount of banging going on in the background. I'm literally like with one eye watching them fly from one end of the house to the other and like use the furniture as um for parkour jungle gym. Yeah, parkour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, guys, see, but this is the reality of Christmas time is that you know, friends and family come together and the kids are insane. Yeah, exactly. They're all hopped up on sugar. And, oh, God, they're both on the couch now. And, you know, the floor is lava at the moment. The floor is lava. Yeah. You know, guys, I'm really, really sorry, but there's only so much we can do because the other option is to put them in the bathroom and then they're just going to meow the whole time. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you get little paws running across the floor instead of meowing. Which is really cute. So. Yes. 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 But shall we get into our next installment of the holiday episode? Yes, we shall. Now, the thing about Christmas and the holidays is it's largely centered around food and mm -hmm. drinks and just being merry. So mm -hmm. that's why we wanted this like third part to be some of our favorite Christmas recipes. And um, mm -hmm. Rachel, I know you're coming with the desserts. I'm coming with the drinks. And um, I think it's like everyone has their traditional things that they love to like cook or bake or drink, I guess. Um, and it's it's kind of nice to like hear about new things, especially if you're like called to a potluck or um, mm -hmm. I feel like cookie parties. Oh, I might have the wrong term. They're like cookie exchanges. Uh, okay. A lot of people go to cookie exchanges around the holidays where you like bake Christmas cookies and you swap with other people. Mm -hmm. um, so if you need some ideas, like here you go. We're going to give Good. them to you. Yes, we are. 
Yes, we are. I actually have, uh, it just so happened that when I was Christmas shopping with my mom yesterday, I took pictures of uh, the three cookie recipes I'm going to be doing. So this is, this is reality, guys. I'm actually, I actually bought the stuff to do this. So I can uh, start first. That sounds yeah, good. Yeah, go for it. All right. So my first little treat is almond butter cookies. So there's a story behind these because I was originally going to make sugar cookies and then I was there at my mom's house yesterday going through her little like ancient 90s cook cookie book recipe thing. Nice. My mom has Um, the same one. (laughs) Yes, definitely. And uh, I was going through trying to find the sugar cookies and she goes, Rachel, I actually don't like sugar cookies. I like these ones instead. So I got vetoed. (laughs) <laughs> yes no no yes. sugar cookies which like okay but the thing is it's basically the same thing so i'm gonna read to you how this is made all right okay so to start you need one cup of butter a quarter cup of granulated sugar a third of a cup of packed brown sugar packed is very important my friends you gotta make packed sure it's is packed. very important yes yes one teaspoon of almond flavoring and two cups of flour so really the only difference here against sugar cookies is the almond flavoring so um i think she just likes sugar cookies but she doesn't want to admit it so yeah i'm gonna go with that i'm gonna go with that because Mm -hmm. almonds almonds are healthy even though this Mm -hmm. is like an almond flavoring exactly so very important guys we all know how to mix ingredients together but you need to chill this dough for one hour before you can roll it out and make it you know into your pretty little shapes and then cook it and you bake it at 350 for 12 to 15 minutes nice and easy and this recipe makes 36 cookies unless you're making really giant cookies which i sometimes do yes now for a sugar cookie um -hmm. sorry almond butter cookie Yes, uh, there's a big difference. Around, <laughs> big difference. Do you ever play around with like the sprinkles or the food coloring? Um, I do, or I tried to last year, but I didn't have the best um, like sprinkles and stuff. But I'd like to do it this year where I make them super pretty. Um, but I like to save the icing uh, for my next recipe that I'm going to share. Oh, okay. So yes. I will leave it there but these are nice you know if somebody doesn't in your family doesn't want to admit they like sugar cookies make them these because then they can be like but they're almond (laughs) they're almond butter cookies they're not sugar cookies and it's like exactly now i have one question how close are those to like a shortbread cookie uh i personally actually think they're very different um they're a lot lighter and Earlier, true yes yes that is the thing short, about like a, a more sugar cookie yeah. it it is like that more i don't want to say cakey but like a lot yeah. lighter where yeah we're yeah, like the shortbread's shortbread. a little bit more like um condensed in a way yeah like shortbread is dense and like thick like i always find like yeah. i need to drink like a glass of milk with shortbread yes. <laughs> cookies um so i'm not a big shortbread girl they're enjoyable, but I would always go for like a sugar cookie or butter cookie just because they feel kind of, uh, they take a bit less work to eat and I feel like I yeah. can eat more of them, you know? True. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's everything for me on that one. I actually have not made these before, but I've been informed that that's what I'm making. So, well, you know what? Sometimes trial and error, those are the best cookies. Yep. So, yes, you know, are. if you're not really a baker and just just try you know yeah just try there, exactly. you can't really mess up cookies too bad exactly and like the thing is is usually usually uh your mom is most likely sick and tired of making the cookies and she'll just be so happy that you tried yeah didn't your mother you retire know? last year from making cookies like she was just like she nah, did no, no more she makes nanaimo bars and that's it but i don't know how to make those so i can't share her recipe <laughs> okay Maybe yes. next year. Maybe next year. I am baking with her this year, so I, I will keep an eye out. Shall we get into your first recipe? Yes. Yeah, so let's start with the uh, beginning of the day. Um, I feel like a lot of people enjoy a mimosa on Christmas Day or just during the holidays. I know my mm-hmm. family, we always have like a bottle of champagne for Christmas Day. 
And the traditional, obviously, is, you know, half orange juice, half champagne. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes I like to do a cranberry mimosa as well because I'm not really a big orange juice drinker. It kind of bugs my Mm -hmm. stomach a little bit. So if you are a little Mm -hmm. bit sensitive, try a cranberry. But I kind of want to share the really festive and like wow your house guests mimosa. Mm -hmm. And that one is a cider mimosa. So, Ooh, yes, interesting. you're going to start with your champagne. I personally prefer Prosecco over like a, a Brut. Um, mm-hmm. I just find the flavor is a little less dry. Mm-hmm. And if you've been listening for a while, I'm not really a big like wine drinker and I don't mm-hmm. really like dry wines. So go for Prosecco. It just has like a bit nicer of a flavor. And um, you're going to get your champagne flutes. And in a small plate, you're going to mix a little bit of cinnamon and a little bit of sugar. Uh, Just give that a little mix. Uh, It doesn't have to be crazy, just a little stir, just so it's um, kind of blended. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to take an apple wedge. And what you're going to do is rim the flutes with the apple wedge, just so you get a little bit of juice on there. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to put your flutes into the cinnamon sugar to get a nice little rim Mm -hmm. you want to make sure it's very Mm -hmm. like crusted on you don't want to go lightly on this because it's all about that flavor and and the look and then you're going to do your half apple cider with half champagne um now if i can make any recommendations on the cider try to get the fresh pressed stuff or even if you like Mm. wanted to make your own cider literally by juicing apples the flavor is going to be so much better and you're not going to get all that like sediment crap in it um Mm -hmm. i find there's like a lot of the cheap jugs of cider they don't last very long and the flavor is very flat um Mm -hmm. so it is kind of worth getting a bit nicer of a cider that is like fresh pressed from whole apples and like quality apples Mm-hmm. Because if you're just getting like the the gross little juicers, um, it's going to show in the flavor. So that's just being mm-hmm. a little bit picky and also trying to support local farmers. But mm-hmm. um, <laughs> that is my first drink. And so once you have uh, the cider and champagne in the flute with the rim, you're going to take your little wedge of apple. Um, if you don't want the apple to go brown, I recommend using Cortland. Okay. Um, this one stops from going brown faster than like a Macintosh or any other kind of apples. It's just how the apple is. Mm -hmm. Or what you can also do is um, if you have any other type of apple, just take a little lemon juice and just shake them in like a little bag just to coat the apples. Mm -hmm. And that will also help prevent them from going brown. And you're just going to put that little wedge of apple on the glass. You're pulling through with your agriculture facts again. (laughs) I did not it's know like, that about apples. I don't know where it comes from. It just, it's all there. It's all there. So, you know, support local farmers, get the good stuff. So yeah, so, that is my first cocktail. And I've done this for Christmas in the past. They are sweet. So if you want to cut down a little bit on the sweetness, I would do more champagne over mm-hmm. cider. Um, mm-hmm. But they are so good. And just the look of them will Mm -hmm. wow your guests or your family, whoever's coming over. Love it. Okay. So when you first told me about this, I thought you meant like alcoholic apple cider with the champagne. So like, can you do that or will that taste weird? um, You know, guys, let me do some experimenting (laughs) and I'll get back to (laughs) you. We'll get back to you. I don't know. I don't. uh, Yeah. um, Like I feel like. It could either taste really good or like horrible. Yeah. See, I think yeah. it depends. I think you have to have a very strong, like, alcoholic cider. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, like a very dry that. one, or uh, no, like you'd want more on the juicier side. Um, mm. Just because I feel like if you went dry with a champagne, it's gonna like overpower. Like you're gonna get a really like um kind of more alcohol like you're gonna taste more of the al- alcohol than the apple mm-hmm. I feel like yeah I feel like it would just be like a really poor cider but like hey I don't know yeah. I have not tried this yet so like definitely someone go let me know um an alternative to this if you want to do a mocktail if you are not um 
drinking alcohol is uh, two two different ways. You can either do um, a club soda, so just soda water with cider, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's just going to water down the cider a little bit. Or honestly, you could just do the full cider. That is perfect for children. Mm-hmm. And um, you could also get – they're harder to find these days, but like a sparkling apple juice. Mm. Good and you point. could do that with the cider or just like, you know, for kids. I know when I was a kid, it was just like I got the sparkling apple mm-hmm. juice in a in a champagne glass. So you could totally do that. But like the fun part is the the rim and the and the apple wedge. So mm-hmm. play around if you if you don't want to do the alcohol part. Gotcha. Yeah. Love it. All right, Rachel, what's yours? All right. So I'm going to read you the description in the book first. And I want you to guess if you can figure – I want you to take a guess as to what it is, okay? Okay, yes. All right, so here's the description. Like last week, I'm giving like a little synopsis. Um, These spicy cookies flatten slightly as they bake. They're crackled on top, crisp on the outside, and slightly soft in the center. Do you know what these are? Hmm. We've had one recently. Oh no. <laughs> okay, read it one more time. Read it one more time. Okay. These spicy cookies flatten slightly as they bake. They're crackled on top, crisp on the outside, and slightly soft in the center. Oh, geez. Sorry. I swear your audio <laughs> cut out because I did not hear that spicy part. And I was just uh-huh. like, what is flattened and crackled? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a ginger molasses cookie. Yes, it is. Great work. Great work. So I love ginger molasses cookies any time of year, but I do especially love them at Christmas and we are doing them this year. So how you make these is you need uh, three quarters of a cup of shortening, which is just great. We love just lard. Uh, Yeah, lard. One. (laughs) We don't like to admit it, but lard makes everything better. It does. It does. Uh, one cup of granulated sugar, one egg, a quarter cup of molasses, two cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of ginger, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and one teaspoon of cloves. Whew, that was long. And what you're going to do is when you make like the balls to go in the oven, you're going to uh, roll them around in granulated sugar as well so then when it bakes Mm. it's like kind of has a sugar coating on the outside that's very important don't miss that um and again we kind of know how to mix things together when you're shaping them into balls they need to be uh one inch in diameter apparently that's important for the prime crackling and uh you put it in the oven at 350 for eight to ten minutes until they turn golden and uh, they should be slightly soft when removed from the oven. So you know how like when you have Pillsbury cookies and they look a little bit too soft to be taken out and you always make the mistake because you take them out because you leave them in longer? Don't do that. Every time. Don't do Every that. Every time. Yes. And then uh, this recipe makes 40 cookies. So. Nice. Enjoy those. They are definitely a Christmas staple in my house and... You know, they're like kind of like a holiday staple for everything. Like I, I just, I just go to Starbucks and get one. So, yeah, you know, like I mean, I like time. the Starbucks ginger molasses cookie year round, but especially around mm-hmm. the holidays, that is definitely yes. when you want to be eating the ginger molasses cookies. Yes. So, try them out. You can't go wrong. They're always a big hit. But again, I will emphasize: make sure you roll them around in the sugar because that is a key component. Yes, it is. That's how you get a little bit of that crunch too, you know? That's good. Yes. So that is that for that recipe, unless you have any questions about the ginger Um, molasses One question. So this one, you want to bake them when they're in a ball, not mashing them down with a fork. Because I know some cookies, I don't know why. I I don't know why. Like some you leave in the ball and others you have to press with the fork. I know like a peanut butter cookie, you get that fork in there. Yes. So um, actually throwing it back to like the almond butter cookies, you roll that out and make it with the cookie shapes. 
Um, yes, that one you have this to like one, roll a flat and then cut out. Yes, where this one uh, you put it into a ball because that way it can kind of spread out and that's how the crackles form. I say this like I'm a baker and understand how it works. Like I don't. <laughs> yes. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> For your next one, what you going to yes. tell me about? Oh, okay. So this one, this is a new discovery for me just as of a couple days ago. Um, I went over to the neighbor for for some drinks as they always have like a little holiday get together. Mm -hmm. And we had martinis. And these were cranberry martinis, cranberry ginger martinis, actually. Um, I feel like this drink, she she does like a, a... a different variation every year, but I really loved this year's variation. So mm-hmm. this is when you want to get your martini glasses out, people. And you're going to take, you know, that same same little plate. You're going to do um, a sugar rim. So just, just white sugar. And then this is where if you have those um, kind of sugar sprinkles. So if you're doing lots of cookies mm-hmm. and you get like the red sprinkles, the green sprinkles, sprinkles. This is also a good time to mix that in a little bit with your sugar rim. Mm -hmm. And this time, you know, you're just going to do like a lime or a lemon, whatever, just more citrus based and Mm -hmm. um, rim the glass. And then you're going to do your your sugar rim. And this one, this one you can play around with, you know, depending on how strong you like it, but you're just going to take one shot of vodka. It doesn't matter what kind, whatever, whatever kind you like. Mm-hmm. And then um, if you can find it, we have it here in Canada. I don't know if it's in the States, but it's the uh, cranberry ginger ale. It's mm-hmm. excellent. And you're mm-hmm. going to put in um, preferably crushed ice. Mm-hmm. So just to kind of gives it a little bit more of like a, a wintry slushy mm-hmm. taste. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, you're just going to combine the the ice. Shot of vodka. You can do two if that's your if that's your style, mm-hmm. and uh, top it off with that cranberry ginger ale. Um, that sounds fantastic. And this is what my neighbor did. So if you really want to get super cute, you're going to take a marshmallow, oh. and you're going to put a little piece of like like a quarter of a maraschino cherry in it for a nose. Um, mm-hmm. And then if you have a little spice, and I believe the spice she used was like the anise spice, you can mm-hmm. use that for its eyes mm-hmm. and uh, make a little mouth as well. Aww. And then if you can find them, I don't know where she found them, guys. I don't know. Um, little reindeer antlers as well. You can do that too. And you just put it in the glass to float around as a cute little decoration. That's so cute. Yeah. I love yeah, that. So- that's a new cocktail, and this one um, could easily make it mocktail, kid friendly. You know, uh, mm-hmm. just do the the cran ginger ale. Now, of course, if you cannot find the cranberry ginger ale, just do a little cranberry juice with ginger ale, and you're mm-hmm. gonna get the same thing. Nice. See, I love the thought of this, but I actually cannot handle martinis. They're way oh, really? too strong for me. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I think just like, or maybe I haven't had the right martini. That could yeah, be it. Yeah, you have to have a good martini. And um, if you want to make it like a true martini, you can definitely put some vermouth in it. She was just like, I don't mm-hmm. have any. So I didn't put it in. And I'm like, yeah. that's cool. I didn't notice. Um, mm-hmm. So that that's another ingredient that you can throw in if you want to do the more true martini. But mm-hmm. if you just have like some vodka laying around, there mm-hmm. you go. Simple martini. I think it's probably the vermouth that doesn't. Like there, I just remember there being a distinct taste in the martinis that I was like, uh, okay. So I think for it you, might be leave, that. The, leave the vermouth out. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Alrighty. Shall I get into my next one? Absolutely. All right. So this is a classic guys and please don't roll your eyes at me, but I love making them. I'm just in that phase and it's gingerbread cookies. And I'm going to share a recipe from my, you know, the nineties, the nineties book. And I just like to think that these are true gingerbread cookies. So you're going to need half a cup of shortening, half a cup of packed brown sugar. Again, packed is very important, friend. One egg, a half a cup of molasses, a quarter cup of water, two 
and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour. That was a tongue twister there. I almost lost it. Uh, Half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of ginger, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and half a teaspoon of ground allspice. And it says on here that raisins are optional, but why? I've never had raisins Um, in gingerbread cookies. Have you? No, that just, I don't like that. That does not seem seem right. That seems fake. Forget it. Yeah. No way. So the nice thing about this one, uh, this recipe, is it says uh, you only need to chill it if necessary. So if the dough is ready to go and it's firm, then you can just start baking right away. But if it needs to firm up a bit, then you need to chill it. Uh, And I'm just getting down here. So once you've rolled out the dough and you're going to roll it out to one eighth of an inch thickness. So, you know, get out your little measuring tapes, guys. And, you know, you make little shapes and such. Bake at 350 for 8 to 10 minutes or just until firm. So depending on how your, I don't know, your oven works. And uh, then you decorate with icing. And I, I'll i give you the recipe that accompanies it. And that is uh, one egg white, lightly beaten, and add half a teaspoon of almond extract. And then add in enough uh, sifted icing sugar to make it thicken and go smoothly through like your icing piping uh tool what i did last year though is i just use i just use milk and like a ton of icing sugar and it was probably the best icing i've ever had because it didn't crack which is very important uh so i would recommend doing that over this so yeah we love gingerbread men Uh, am i good at decorating them absolutely not but it's the thought that counts my my question was just going to be, have you ever attempted a gingerbread house? Um, yes, and I'm horrible at them. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. How are you at them? Are you talented? Um, you know, I've never made one from scratch, but I do remember getting the kit. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I am no artiste, so yeah. I had fun. I remember having fun, but it definitely was not beautiful, and I'm pretty sure I ate, like, most of the icing and decorations. I would always overload the icing in yeah. certain areas and it just, oh, yeah. it just never, it never looked good. So, you know, no. I've, I've given up on that phase of my life. <laughs> See, I actually think it'd be really funny if my partner and I as one of our date nights got a gingerbread house because he's very artistic and meticulous about things that I'm pretty sure we would fight. He's also an architect, so like I feel like it would just be extravagant. Like, it would be like additions added onto this gingerbread house. It would be his gingerbread house. I would be supervising. Yep. Yeah. So, any questions about gingerbread men? No. Or is I it think pretty self-explanatory? <laughs> self-explanatory. You know, you got got to have those gingerbread men, especially if you have kids. Like that's just mm-hmm. fun to decorate. Precisely. All right. Into your last one. We're almost there, guys. Almost there. Um, So I was thinking of throwing in a dessert recipe, but since Rachel has provided so many awesome cookies, (laughs) I'm going to do one more cocktail. And I feel like this is the most traditional uh, cocktail when it comes to the holidays. And that involves eggnog. Oh, Rachel, are you an eggnog drinker? Um, eh, Like I'll have (laughs) it. Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. Like, I would rather just have my glass of wine, you know? Yeah, but like just just like non-alcoholic eggnog. Do you drink that ever? No. No. <laughs> no. I feel like eggnog is falling out of favor and I'm like, why? It's fantastic. I, well, I, I just don't it. think to buy it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Last year, I got the like local dairy farmer's eggnog. Oh, my God. Mm. It was incredible. I would only have teeny tiny glasses at a time because it was so rich, but like definitely mm-hmm. worth it. Um, but yeah, as a kid, I loved eggnog. And um, I've never really tried like the cocktail version of mm-hmm. eggnog, like only a few times, but um, it's actually pretty good. And it's kind of a nice like dessert drink, you know, mm-hmm. like it's filling. So um, mm-hmm. if you kind of want to just have like, a little bit of a treat after dinner. Uh, this is a great option. Um, so again, I'm all about 
the the decoration here of of the presentation of the glass. So yes. you're going to take like more of a uh, oh gosh what are they called uh, like a wine glass without a stem, all right, or like a rocks glass. Um, you kind of want something that's like short, not not a flute, not a martini glass. I mean, use whatever glass you want. Doesn't there's no rule, but um, a rocks glass is is preferable here. And on your plate, you're going to do um, cinnamon, just cinnamon. And you can, you can use like water as a rim, you know, lemon, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just get that cinnamon to Mm -hmm. stick there. Um, So get your cinnamon rim. You're going to fill the glass with ice and you're going to do um, a shot of, this is where you can kind of play around, put your favorite in. Rum Mm -hmm. is the traditional uh, alcohol used in it. Some people Mm -hmm. like dark rum, but dark rum can be very strong for some Mm -hmm. people. Uh, So if you don't really like dark rum, I would suggest either a amber rum uh, or a white rum. Okay. But of course, you can go totally off the rails and like use Bailey's, use uh, vodka. doesn't matter. Whatever whatever floats your boat. But rum is a little bit more of that um, rich – like you're going to stay in the rich flavors if you use rum. Mm -hmm. So – do your shot of rum, and then you're going to top with eggnog. Um, if you're really feeling it, you can also do either brandy. And um, if you're kind of not feeling like all the cream, that's why you want to have like a lot of ice in there. Mm-hmm. It kind of cuts the creaminess of an eggnog. But if you're mm-hmm. very sensitive to that, just cut it with like a little milk as well or mm-hmm. almond milk, whatever whatever you enjoy. I mean, eggnog comes in like so many different versions now that you can Mm -hmm. use any kind. Um, So then when you have your glass, you're going to take a cinnamon stick and you're going to throw it in the glass. There you Mm go. Excellent. Those are all my cocktails. Nice. Nice. Well, those were all my cookies. So I think we're good to go, guys. I hope that that was helpful for you because you can never have too many nice cocktails or too many cookies. Absolutely. I mean, I find the holidays, it is time to enjoy Mm -hmm. and just indulge, right? Like, exactly. I'm already feeling like eat all the things. Well, me too. Uh, I've been in the chocolates Mm -hmm. (laughs) way too much right now. Same. Yes. Same. And I really love peppermint mochas from Starbucks. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I was there uh, when I was Christmas shopping with my mom yesterday. we went into Starbucks to get our lot to our our drinks, and she was like, "I think I need to try a peppermint mocha. I've never had one." And then, of course, it's like the grande uh, oh one God. on the poster, and she was like, "It's it's four hundred calories." And I'm like, "Mom, it's Christmas. Drink it's Christmas. the damn thing. We're walking. It's fine." <laughs> exactly. She got a tall version of it without whipped cream, and I'm like, "Fine," but uh, she enjoyed it from what I understand. So, nice. and they make them in decaf. They make them decaf, oh, which was very perfect. exciting news for me. Yeah. That is. That is. That's going to open up a lot of doors for some people. It is. It is. Anyway, yeah. that's not a recommendation, guys. I think everybody knows what a peppermint mocha from Starbucks is. So. <laughs> yeah, that's – we're not putting that in there. But, I mean, I guess you could make it at home, just get some peppermint syrup or whatever mm-hmm. flavoring. Um, but, yeah, those are all of our holiday recipes. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, mm-hmm. This is going to be our last recording for 2022. We are going to take mm-hmm. a bit of a, a break, but not so much. We're going to try and, like, catch up a little bit on getting some episodes recorded. We have lots to share with you guys for mm-hmm. the new year. And Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're probably going to post some replay episodes. So if you're kind of new to our podcast, um, you know, we're going to pull some things out of the archive that uh, are some of our favorite episodes. So we hope you'll take Mm -hmm. a listen to them and enjoy those. But honestly, just have like a happy, safe holiday and a fun New Year's and we'll come out with like our our lessons from 2022 and then what we're looking forward to doing in 2023. Excuse me, everyone. That was the cats. Sorry about that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yes, 100%. And I hope uh, or we hope that you all had 
a great year or as good as your year could possibly be. Uh, there's definitely a lot of crazy things happening out there, but hope that you have been safe and comfortable and uh, yeah, all the best wishes to everyone and we'll probably uh, see you like maybe first or second week of January. We're not sure yet. We'll let you know. You'll know yeah. because we'll post. You'll know when you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You'll know when you know. Yeah. So uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And if you want to share any of your favorite holiday recipes, holiday memories, or just want to talk to us in general, we love to hear from you. You can email us at teawithlaurachel at gmail.com. And we'll answer you pretty quickly. We love emails. <laughs> Yes, we love emails, so definitely send us an email because um, we love to connect with you guys. But uh, that's all for us for this year. So live mm -hmm. like tea. Live like tea. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Bye. <laughs>